Hey guys, Jonah here, and I'm back with another Advent Calendar beer review. And here we are, we are looking at the beer company um, Advent Calendar, and we are on day number 10. Come on. Oh, I've got to get the, uh, the bubble, the pom-pom out of my face. Um, and I have to say, I'm really getting into this. This is in the right place uh, for me. I was thinking about trying to put some lights around it and that kind of stuff. Um, it, I have to say, if you don't lean it up against the wall, or in this case, like an alcove or something like that, it is wobbly as fuck. But if you don't move it, it works really well. It could be a little bit kind of better connected together. That's what I think. But um, otherwise, it's holding up. All right, we are dun, 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 going for day number 10. Just over here, we are we into double figures on the uh, on the advent calendar. We're almost at the uh, the second tier. We're going to be down here, and then there's a couple of beers in here as well. Come on, what have we got? What have we got? Ah, okay. Uh, I have had beers from Harbour Brewing before. Ding, ding. Harbour Brewing Co. Um, but not this one. This is the Hellas. It's called Wave Hunter, brewed in Cornwall. Of course. Um, there we go. It is a Hellas lager. As you can see, four and a half percent on the ABV in Curland, uh, in Cornwall. PL is Plymouth, obviously. Um, we have got, and I might have to turn my head over to the side. Um, aroma herbal lemon, clean, crisp flavour. Um, finish is brisk. Doesn't really say too much more. But Helles or Hells or Hellies, however you want to pronounce it, um, it's basically a German style uh, lager. Uh, it's quite light, um, which is cool and the gang. And Harbour, I like what they're doing. Really simple, got their logo, got a kind of red and uh, or orange and white kind of thing going on there. Not 100% sure what that's got to do with a lager, but hey, never, never mind. Uh, normal ingredients, Rhine hot scabbards. Um Yeah, interesting. Right, let me let me put this back to or try and put this back to that eleven. Hey, we're going to get that out of the way tomorrow, and we don't have to worry about that door like being ajar. You know, we're going to have a jar tomorrow, and the door of number eleven is going to be ajar. Okay. <coughs> So pressure testing, not too bad. Couple of hits of the top, and we'll do a tiny pressure test. Yep, that's good. And then the full open. Again, beer company. This this beer glass is cool because you can get a whole three thirty in. I don't think you can get a four forty in. But you can definitely get a 330 in plus a little bit of head. And there we go. Really, really cool. That looks like a nice pint of lager under a finger's head. Perfectly white head there. And really super, super, super. You can see the tree through there, that's cool. Super clear, as you would expect. Hmm. Right, let me do, get my silly face out of the way. Arbor, yeah, that way, that way. No, that way to get the tree in maybe as well. Boom, boom, something like that, a doom. And then that's done. Put that up there. As you well know, dear viewer, if you are a, a viewer that's watched a few of my videos, I'm not really a lager man, to be perfectly honest. However, I do have lager sometimes. Um, it's just not my bag, not my thing. Um, 
I'm a kind of child of the 70s and 80s. So, yeah, lager back then was, it was a thing, but it was firmly in control. And people like Camera, the campaign for real ale, were really, really against lager taking over the world, um, which it kind of did for a while. Um, the only the only person or the only real brewery was Guinness that stood up kind of against the lager and was everywhere and still is, um, which is cool. Shamal to Guinness. Anyway, let us dive in. Let's go for a, a wee snifter. So we're getting that kind of a kind of lemony thing that you do get with some lagers, but really clean, really crisp. Um, no hint of sugar um, or you know sweetness there. It's just kind of a lemon kind of thing, bitter. I guess you could call it a bitter thing. We will see what we get. Cheers and beers. We're into double figures now, so yeah, we're getting there. It's nice. We're getting carbonation burn to start with, but that's normal with the lager. Then we're getting a hit of bitterness, but not super bitter. Then we're getting that kind of lemon taste. A um, little bit of malts there, kind of residual malts, um, which is nice. Uh, but it's a lager, <laughs> you know what I mean? Everything's there. Maybe not as super crisp as I thought. There's definitely kind of residual maltiness. Uh, there's also that kind of lemony kind of thing going on, but not as an off flavor. That's kind of how it's supposed to be. Um, yeah, it's reasonably dry. Um, yeah, not a sweet finish, quite a crisp, bitter finish, but quite watery too. Um, but, and everything you think a lager might be, <laughs> that's what this is. Maybe a tiny bit of creaminess there, you know, a tiny, tiny bit. But it's that kind of lemony thing um, that a lot of lagers have. Um, which is probably from the hops. It doesn't actually say what the hops are. It just says hops. But yeah, it's very, very much like any kind of normal lager, Hellas, you know, you could have that. The weird thing is, if you drank that in the summer on a sunny day, searching for the waves, as they say, because it's called Wave Hunter, um, you would not be disappointed. But on a cold winter's night, drinking a session lager, a four and a half percent lager, um, probably not really, <laughs> pardon me, but a bit of carbonation there, probably not really the right sort of thing to do. Um, I'll tell you what though, it's, it's, it is absolutely fine. It's just not outstanding, put it that way. <laughs> and I believe, as I've said previously for the beer company, this was originally 130 pounds on their website, which means this particular beer cost five pounds for a very, very small glass of beer. Um, when you're in central London, yes, you would pay that easily for a half a lager, but, in the comfort of my own home, you know, I, I wouldn't normally pay that. Um, so of the two day 10 beers, this one against the honey beer or the marshmallow beer, I think that one takes it, even though it was a bit overly sweet. Uh, this is just a little bit too kind of boring, a bit too safe. Um, so I, I'd always give something to a beer that's interesting over a really safe one so beer 52 does win the day 10 uh rating challenge <laughs> cheers and beers guys if you've liked this video click like click subscribe join the john or army down below um, and make sure you flick my bell because 
then you won't miss any of my peer reviews. Um, I also post on Facebook and all that stuff. And untapped, my untapped handle is in the uh, is in the notes down below. So if you want to follow me on untapped, absolutely fine. Um, that I think is about it for today. So Uncle Jonah says, "Don't drink lager when you can drink honey beer." Shaman, we'll see you tomorrow.